I recently concluded my videos on different type of hernias. So today to conclude that season, I thought I'll quickly discuss the different things or different conditions that increase the risk of developing a hernia. In my view, these are the most common things that increase our risk. Obesity is the most important factor in the development of hernias. Fat acts in different ways. First of all, to understand two different types of obesities. One is apple-shaped or central obesity. One is pear-shaped, which is peripheral obesity. So in a shape of an apple, all the fat accumulates in the midriff, in the middle of the tummy and the chest. And this is the shape men usually have. Women usually have peripheral obesity. So most of their weight will be around their buttocks and their thighs. Central obesity hence puts us men at a high risk of developing hernias as compared to women. Certain types of hernias like umbilical hernias, epigastric hernias and inguinal hernias are far more common in men as compared to women. Also central obesity increases the risk of chest infections and wound infections after surgery, especially after major abdominal surgery with big incisions on the tummy. Both of these things, i.e. wound infection and chest infection, increases the risk of post-surgical or incisional hernias, as we discussed in my video on incisional hernias. Second important factor in development of hernias is malnutrition, especially protein malnutrition. Because of the low protein, the muscle bulk is lost and as muscles give us the strength in our abdomen to keep the organs in, the weaknesses in our tummy, certainly around the umbilicus and the inguinal canal, the femoral canal, because of being malnourished, goes down. Malnutrition could be because of anorexia, could be because of bulimia, could be because of starvation, could be because of cancer, could be because of chemotherapy, etc. There are many different causes of malnutrition. When the proteins go down, especially in the blood, when they go down, fluid accumulates in the tummy as well, called ascites. And that fluid puts too much pressure on our tummy, especially the wall of the tummy, and weak places in the abdomen, like the umbilicus or the inguinal canal, can form hernias. Next thing is diabetes. Many type 2 diabetics, which are non-insulin dependent, are usually overweight. And because of their obesity, they have a high risk of developing hernias. After surgery, diabetics don't heal their wounds as well as a normal person will do. That increases the risk of developing a hernia through the surgical wound. Diabetics are also at a high risk of developing infections, not just wound infections, but also post-surgical chest infections. Because of chest infection, the patient coughs more to clear the chest. That increases the pressure in the abdomen and increases the risk of post-surgical hernias. Next risk factor is smoking. Smoking gives rise to chronic cough. As the patients cannot clear the chest as easily as compared to a non-smoker. This can affect both without surgery and after surgery and compounded after surgery. When the patients get chronic cough, it increases the intra-abdominal pressure and weak spots on the tummy like a surgical wound or the umbilicus or the inguinal canal or the femoral canal has a higher risk of developing a hernia. Age. Hernias are more common in extreme of ages, very young and very old. The reason is because abdominal muscles are not very well developed in children or in very elderly people and that increases the risk of developing a hernia. Certain types of hernias are very common in infants and newborns like umbilical hernias and inguinal hernias. Many of these, they heal on their own and they don't require any treatment. Please do watch my videos on these, give you more information. Elderly people um, are more predisposed to hernias like inguinal hernias in men and femoral hernias in women. Some hernias like femoral hernias are more common in females, whereas hernias like umbilical hernia, epigastric hernia and inguinal hernia are more common in men. Immune suppression increases the risk of developing a hernia. 
Whether immune suppression is because of disease like rheumatoid arthritis or diabetes or cancer, etc. Or it is because of medications like chemotherapy or steroids or whatever other medication which suppress our immunity increases the risk of developing a hernia. This happens as a result because muscle wasting takes place because of immune suppression. Number two, risk of chest infections and wound infections are higher, both of which increase the risk of post-operative hernias. Connective tissue disorders are conditions which some individuals are born with, for example, Marfan syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, Leinfelter syndrome. In these individuals, the connective tissue, which is a supporting tissue of our body, can be very weak or not properly formed and that can increase the risk of developing hernias. Pregnancy can increase the risk of developing abdominal hernias because of the increased intra-abdominal pressure which puts too much pressure on weak spots on our tummy like the umbilicus, the groins from which the hernias can develop. These hernias not necessarily happen during pregnancy but can happen soon after pregnancy is finished. Excessive collection of fluid inside the tummy increases the pressure inside the tummy which increases the risk of developing hernias. This can happen after peritoneal dialysis which is given to patients with kidney failure. It can also happen with excessive fluid collection in the tummy because of malnutrition as I discussed earlier or from liver disease or heart failure etc. Exercise, we all know, is good for us. It increases the tone of our abdominal muscles, tone us down and reduces the risk of hernias. However, exercise not done correctly or done beyond our capability, excessive weights, putting too much pressure on our tummy muscles, especially weak areas around the umbilicus and the groins, can increase the risk of developing hernias. Also, doing very heavy weight exercises putting too much pressure on our abdominal muscles soon after a major abdominal operation can increase the risk of developing wound hernias. I hope you found this video informative. If you did then please do remember to give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions please write them in the comment section. I'll be very happy to answer your questions and please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you again and I see you very soon. Until next time take care.